But what does a Torah observant Christian like me do with a text like Acts 15? Let's take a look. I'm just going to go out on a limb here and say that uh, James, Paul, Peter, and all the rest knew exactly what they were talking about. They weren't trying to uh, make peace between the Gentiles and the Jews. They were just trying to do exactly the right thing from the very beginning. So here I am in Acts 21 of all places because the letter that was given in Jerusalem was kind of recounted here. So this is the Apostle Paul after the third missionary journey. Um, he has had a, a, a pretty good go-around of encouraging the churches that have been planted, planted as a result of his efforts. And so here we are in Acts 21, verse 17. It says, After we arrived in Jerusalem, the brethren received us gladly. So you know, here's the Apostle Paul with some of um, his, his uh, friends, Luke and such. And um, they've received him, verse 18. And the following day, Paul went in with us to James who was the elder of the Jerusalem council, and all the elders were present. So, senior elder. Verse 19, after he had greeted them, he began to relate one by one the things which God had done among the Gentiles through his ministry. So, everyone's pretty excited. You know, they don't have internet, they don't have snail mail, as we understood it, or understand it today. Uh, so, he is reporting on the ministry and that the Holy Spirit is, in fact, uh, uh, bringing people to faith, verse 20. And when they heard it, they began glorifying God, all very excited about this. And they said to him, they, meaning the elders, maybe James, uh, talking to Paul, you see, brother, probably Paul, you see, brother, how many thousands there are, are among the Jews of those who have believed. So there's a lot of Jewish people who understand the Torah, who have believed in Jesus, believed in Yeshua, and they are all zealous for the law. And so they're following Jesus, they're following the law, and they've got those two things kind of matched up. And they're kind of wondering about something. Is the Apostle Paul, like, are you telling them not to follow the, um, the Torah? Uh, what's going on there? And James just wants to alleviate that. Verse 21, and they've been told, they meaning the Jews that have believed in Jesus, they've been told about you. Now, I'm going to include in there non-believing Jews too. Those are the ones that want to, to kill Paul. But everyone else is, a, is kind of a, a, a bit confused, apprehensive or whatever. It's like, I mean, are these things not um, uh, uh, copacetic with each other, both following Jesus and the Torah? Is the Apostle Paul saying something different? Now, the Apostle Paul did not say anything different, and James is going to give him some instructions, some, something that he could do to just kind of show, hey, um, you know, I do follow the Torah, which he did. You know, here's the Apostle Paul trying to get to Jerusalem, even for Pentecost. That's exactly what he did, likely. <laughs> all, po all signs point to, yes, he made it. Verse 21, and they have been told about you that you are teaching all the Jews who are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, telling them not to circumcise their children nor to walk according uh, to the customs. Wait then, what then is to be done? They will certainly hear that you have come. So everyone's gonna have this question. Therefore, this is what we tell you. We have four men who are under a vow. Take them and purify yourself along with them and pay their expenses so that they may shave their heads. And you can continue reading. Um, well, I'm gonna, I guess I need to finish this, this verse. Pay their expenses so that they may shave their heads and all will know that there is nothing to the things which they have been told about you. You know, people are calling Paul a, a heretic. You know, he's, he's, he's pushing this Jesus guy, but you know, he's, he's uh, leaving the law of Moses and he's teaching others to do the same. And that is not what the Apostle Paul is doing. Now, James continues, but that you yourself also walk orderly, keeping the law. So, James is, is saying, I know you keep the law. I know that all this stuff is like, you know, 
hearsay, people are putting you down and all that stuff, but it's just not true. You know it, I know it. Could you, could you do, do us all a favor and could you um, uh, uh, stop your Nazarite vow along with these other four men and, I mean, stop. Um, Paul's going to stop anyway, but go and to the, to, the, to, the, to the temple and do this as a public display of that you are following the Torah. And again, I want to read it that you yourself also walk orderly, keeping the law. But, verse 25, concerning the Gentiles who have believed, we wrote, having decided that they should abstain, so now they're recounting the letter that happened in Acts 15, abstain from meat sacrificed to idols, and from blood, and from that which is strangled, and from fornication. And then Paul took the men, and the next day, purifying himself along with them, went into the temple, and he did exactly what he asked them to do. Why did they recount the letter? They recounted the letter because they had already made a previous decision in the council that those who are turning to God, would they, they're Gentiles. They, they didn't grow up as, as Jewish folks. They didn't grow up in the Torah. They didn't know. I mean, think about this. Am I going to go to a one-year-old and say, hey, you know, you probably need to start setting up your 401k and um, you might want to start picking out your wedding ring. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. A brand new baby, maybe around eight, nine, 10 months, my kids, 14 months, 15 months, are beginning to walk. What I'm going to say to them is, hey, you're just learning to walk. You might want to start it on start on carpet, maybe hold on to the coffee table. And if your mom's around, you might want to identify where she is. In case you fall, you can fall into her and not into you know the hard corner on the coffee table. So all they're doing is instructing young believers that have um, uh, found Jesus by faith. And they are turning to God and they say, hey, don't do these four things. Now, regarding those four things, um, these were basic things. Uh, if you follow, follow Paul along on his missionary journeys as he's in Asia Minor and such, there are temples everywhere and they are succumbing to all kinds of sexual immorality and just a bunch of bad stuff. And these four things are kind of the initial things that they could do to walk in purity before the Lord. So it's just like basic instruction. And then as they continue to grow, then they can add more things to their, to their lives as they seek to be obedient. So that's basically all that's going on. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna go back to Acts uh, chapter 15 uh, with you. And I'm just gonna kinda do a play-by-play -play, and I'm gonna do it quickly because um, it's just, uh, you know, we gotta kinda go verse by verse. So, Paul is now at the end of his first missionary journey. He is, uh, he's done something that's completely unthinkable. You know, remember in Acts 1.8, they're gonna go into uh, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. The apostle Paul has been converted in Acts 9. He has gone out for his missionary journey. And what do you know? People are in fact turning to God. And so um, in this Jerusalem council, uh, there's this kind of this, this question. You know, you've got these, these brand new converts that are, are, are turning to the Lord. And what do we do? We can't expect them to know all the Torah. Um, where, do, where do we start? And that's the Jerusalem Council ruling. So again, verse by verse. Verse 1. Some men uh, came down from Judea and began teaching the brethren, unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be what? Saved. There is no hoop that we need to um, jump through to be saved other than to honestly believe in our hearts that Yeshua died on the cross, rose again, forgave our sins. And this is not of ourselves. It is something that Yahweh has given to us by his son. But they were saying something else. They were still thinking about, and, and, and what I was talking to you about last week is this idea of legal, legal Judaism, Halakhic Judaism that they had to do these uh, three things. They had to be circumcised, ritual uh, mikvah, or ritual um, uh, baptism, and ritual sacrifice. Now, it was some combination of those types of things, but it was just kind of this entry point into legal, legalized Judaism. But 
they all knew this is, this is not the entry point to the kingdom. The entry point in the kingdom is only by faith in Yeshua. And they were saying something else there in verse 1. So that is the issue, is that they had to be circumcised. Uh, verse 2, And when Paul and Barnabas had great discussion and debate with them, the brethren determined that Paul and Barnabas and some of them should go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and elders concerning this issue. And so Paul is not going to motorcycle outside. Paul is not going to act unilaterally. Uh, they're going to go cons consult the council and ask, you know, what do you think? And we're going to do this as a community by the Spirit. Verse 3, therefore, being sent on their way by the church, uh, they were passing through both Phoenicia and Samaria, describing in detail the conversion of the Gentiles. Now, you got to understand, too, that Gentile isn't this hard designation. Gentile just means goy, other than Jew, one that was not included initially in the um, covenant that happened at Sinai. You're not part of that clan. So um, I would say that Ruth, when she said to Naomi, you need to take me back where your God is going to be my God, your people, my people. She's still a Gentile, but in a sense, she has been grafted into Israel. She has left her otherness, and now she's a part of the commonwealth of Israel. See how that kind of works? So, and um, continue on, and we're, uh, we're bringing great joy to all the brethren. Verse 4, uh, when they arrived at Jerusalem, they were received by the church and the apostles and the elders, and they reported all that God had done with them. And so, I mean, people are coming to know the Lord. It's this exciting stuff. But some, verse 5, of the sect of the Pharisees who had believed stood up saying, it is necessary to circumcise them and to direct them to observe the law of Moses. Now, what can be a bit confusing here is whether it was the actual Torah, uh, the, what, what Yahweh had given at Sinai, but as a means of salvation, or it be rabbinic Torah, you know, the, all the added on stuff that the rabbis gave, Either way, that, that wasn't the ticket into salvation. Faith in Jesus alone is it. There are no hoops to jump through. And so that is the issue here. Verse 6, the apostles and the elders came together to look into this matter. Verse 7, after there had been much debate, Peter stood up and said to them, Brethren, you know that in the early days God made a choice among you, that by my mouth, the Gentiles would hear the word of the gospel and believe, which is what with, happened with the Ethiopian eunuch, with um, Peter, I'm sorry, Peter, uh, Cornelius in uh, Acts 10, um, uh, verse 8, and God, who knows the heart, testified to them, giving them the Holy Spirit just as he did to us. Even though they didn't have the Torah, they didn't have, they couldn't even take their first steps yet, and yet they were saved. They were saved. They would go on to learn how to be sanctified. And what I mean learned by that is still by the power of the Spirit, but Yahweh's writing the Torah on their hearts. They might read the Torah and begin to follow that. Verse 9, And he made no distinction between us and them, cleansing their hearts by faith. Now, verse 10, Therefore, why do you put God to the test by placing upon the neck of the disciples a yoke which neither our fathers nor we have been able to, to bear. Meaning that there's somehow a performative work, whether it is Yahweh's actual Torah or rabbinic Torah, rabbinic law, that yoke, it's just, it's heavy. It, it's that, to try to think that you earning, you're earning your salvation is, a, it's a no-go all the way around. Verse 11, but we believe that we are saved through the grace of the Lord Jesus, whether whether you grew up with the Torah or you didn't grow up with the Torah, it is by grace. In the same way as they also are, verse 12, all the people kept silent and they were listening to Barnabas and Paul as they were relating the signs and wonders God had done through them among the Gentiles. Now here comes the judgment, verse 13. After they had stopped speaking, James answered saying, brethren, listen to me. Simeon has related how God first concerned himself about taking from among the Gentiles a people for his name. So he's addressing here that, man, we are, we are in like a new day. The Spirit has been poured out on people that they might live faithfully 
in um, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth and proclaim the gospel, the Holy Spirit is going to move powerfully and people are going to be turning to God. And it's just like, it's like a mind blower. This just hasn't happened like that yet. Verse 15, with, uh, with this, the words of the prophets agree, just as it is written, after these things, I will return and I will rebuild the tabernacle of David, which has fallen. And so they just kind of go into this discourse, uh, quoting Isaiah, simply saying that what was prophesied is happening right before us. And <laughs> wow, <laughs> it's just, it's a really neat thing. Verse 19, therefore, it's my judgment that we do not trouble those who are what? Turning to God, who are repenting. They didn't grow up with the Torah. They didn't know these ways. They're just believing on faith. They're getting some things right because the Spirit has written the, is writing the law intuitively on their hearts, but they have not actually read the Torah. They don't know. We shouldn't, we should not trouble, make it difficult for these people who are turning, turning to God among the Gentiles. Little babies who are just learning to walk. I would never say to them, go start your 401k. Know everything there is about the stock market. Save six months of income. I wouldn't say that to a baby. They're just turning, just learning to walk. That's verse 19, verse 20. But that we write to them that they abstain. Now, here's the list of the things they need to be doing. Now, I always wondered, as someone who didn't believe in the Torah before, uh, why didn't I do these four things at the very least? And then a lot of people say, well, if they wanted them to follow the whole Torah, why didn't they just say follow all of the Torah? You gotta remember, these are babies. You don't, the law of Moses has been preached everywhere. They know where they're headed, but they've got to learn. They don't know the feast days. They don't know any of this stuff. But because they're around all of these pagan temples that, that try to grab their attention to do certain things that this list of four addresses. Now, I can't say that for sure, but I mean, it's just all signs point to that. I've read enough scholarly work to say, okay, that's probably what's happening here. Can I say it definitively? I can't. Here's what I do know. It's the baby steps part. And that's all the intent was. So verse 21, for Moses from ancient generations has in every city those who preach him since he is read in the synagogues every Sabbath. And then it seemed good to the elders and to the whole church by the Spirit to go ahead and write this letter. So, as they continue to go to synagogue, Sabbath by Sabbath, they're gonna learn all of the Torah. And interestingly, if you were to look at the four things that they prescribe, um, these are in Leviticus, uh, uh, 17, 18, 19. And if you were to take the Torah and kind of use chiastic structure, you know, you and I think of A, B, C, D, E, F, you know, the, the end of the alphabet is Z. But for them, it was kind of more like the mountaintop was the main point. And so Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, all are important, but if you if you converge it right in the middle, the middle of the Torah is Leviticus, and the middle of Leviticus is right there when you know it around chapters 17, 18, 19. And so maybe they were making that point. Now, here's what I know that that may or may not be true, that part. But here's what I do know is that nowhere is the Jerusalem Council saying that the Torah isn't for everybody. And they reiterate that in Acts 21. What they're doing is they're recognizing that the entry point into the kingdom for those that have not grown up with the Torah, just as it is for everyone, is faith in Jesus alone. The sanctifying process will happen over time, but if you want to start somewhere, you will do well with these four things. That's what's going on in Acts 15. I'll see you next week. <music>